Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Brett James back again with another video. And today we're going to be talking about my playoff predictions. Now that free agency and trades have basically settled down to this point, we can really get a good look at what teams are actually going to make the playoffs this year, and better yet, what teams are actually going to contend for an NBA title this year. Now, in my opinion, I think that there's about eight teams this year that realistically have a shot at winning the NBA Finals and feel like they have a chance to. But we're just going to be talking about the teams that I think are going to make the playoffs. So let's just stop wasting time and hop right into the video. So now I'm going to move on to the Western Conference. And this took me a lot of time and a lot of thinking to actually organize it and actually think what teams can make the playoffs in the West. But to me, there's about 13 teams in the West this year that think that they have a chance at making the 8th seed, which I think is realistic. The only two teams in the Western Conference this year that know that they have zero chance of making the playoffs are the Memphis Grizzlies and the Phoenix Suns. Every other team in the West has a chance to make the playoffs, and it's going to be an exciting and fun start to the whole NBA season in the West. So coming in at number 8, I got the San Antonio Spurs. This I only picked just because... Murray's coming back off injury. Looney Walker's going to come back into his second year. And Greg Popkovich is arguably one of the greatest coaches of all time. The Spurs are just a well-run organization. And even when it looks like they're not going to be a playoff team at all, they always surprise him. They always come back. The San Antonio Spurs still have DeMar DeRozan, an all-star level guard. LaMarcus Aldridge, one of the better power forwards in the league. I have high expectations for DeJounte Murray, who was supposed to have a breakout year this past year and he ended up tearing his ACL, so I expect him to come back healthy and do very well in Popkovich's system, and I expect the Spurs to edge out an eight seed in the West. All right, coming in at number seven, I got the Houston Rockets. Now, I know I'm gonna take a lot of heat for this, but I want you to hear me out. I know Russell Westbrook and James Harden are two of the last three MVPs in the league, but I don't know how I feel with them both being number one and number two in usage rate, and both being top five turnover machines in the NBA. Their playing styles don't fit together. Russell Westbrook doesn't fit Mike D'Antoni's system. And in the Western Conference, especially this year, every game from games one to 82 matter the most. And although they've played together in the past and they think that they know each other, they're two completely separate players at this point in their career. And I'm not sure how their egos are gonna mesh well together at this point. They were able to keep guys like P.J. Tucker, Eric Gordon, and Clint Capella, big guys and big role players on their team that fit D'Antoni's system. But otherwise, I don't see Russell Westbrook and James Harden actually fitting together, especially come playoff time. I see them as losing in the first round once they face a real team with good coaches and they're going to have to make adjustments. I don't see that happening. Now, I got the Portland Trailblazers coming in at number six. I wanted to actually put them top three because I believe in Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, and Terry Stotts, a very underrated coach in the NBA. Everyone knows Damian Lillard's probably the most underrated player, if not the most underrated player in the NBA. One of the best point guards in the NBA, but in a tough Western Conference, again, I don't see them competing for a championship and I don't see them being a top three seed. The Portland Trailblazers did go to the Western Conference Finals last year and ended up getting swept in four to the Golden State Warriors. They still are a great team, but adding Hassan Whiteside is not going to put them over the top. The Portland Trailblazers haven't done anything in the last five years to put them over the top. They've just stuck with the same team with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum for the most part. The Portland Trailblazers really need to make a move at the deadline to put themselves over the top because they really are a fantastic team. All right, coming in at number five, I got the Golden State Warriors. I know that they lost Kevin Durant, and I understand Klay Thompson is probably not going to be 100% at all this year, if he even does play this year. But how can I count out arguably the greatest shooter of all time, one of the most impactful, if not the most impactful player in the whole entire league in Steph Curry? They ended up signing and trading to get D'Angelo Russell as well. Not sure how that'll fit as well, but I think Steve Curry is a very, very, very good coach, and he's going to be able to integrate them well together but the Warriors just have championship success they know what it takes to get the job done Steph Curry's going to put the team on his back as he's done in the past and that team is going to be absolutely scary and I have high expectations for the Warriors again if Klay Thompson comes back to 100% because they've still got Draymond Green and they just re-signed Kevin Looney 
Now, they did lose Andre Iguodala and Sean Livingston as well. Two huge guys to their championship success as well. But the Golden State Warriors know what it takes to get the job done. And I have them coming in at the number five. So, all right, coming in at number four, I got the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, the Los Angeles Lakers added Anthony Davis and a bunch of other good role players in this year's offseason. But the Los Angeles Lakers still have a lot of question marks regarding Anthony Davis and LeBron's long-term health throughout a season, their coaches, and their role players together. I'm not sure how their bench is actually going to fit once they're actually out on the court. I don't know how their whole team's going to fit and mesh well together when they're on the court as well. I don't believe in the Los Angeles Lakers until they actually show me something, but if they end up pulling it together, LeBron and Anthony Davis are still two MVP caliber players that can go out and put up 60 points together on any given night. And if the Lakers do find a way to put this all together, they can absolutely go compete for a championship in this year's finals. But realistically, in their first year together, I have them losing in the second round just because I don't trust the rest of their role players except for maybe Danny Green. And that's about it come playoff time. All right, coming in at number three, I have the Denver Nuggets. Now, the Denver Nuggets are running it back basically with the exact same team that they had last year. Michael Porter Jr. is coming off injury, so hopefully he can stay healthy and have a great rookie sophomore year. And they just traded for Jerry and Grant as well to the Oklahoma City Thunder, giving up that first round pick. Nikola Jokic is still an MVP caliber player, one of the best centers in the NBA, made all NBA team as well. And Jamal Murray's a great young and up and coming player, Will Barton, and they've still got great pieces to go along with their team. Paul Millsap is a great veteran. Mike Malone is a very underrated coach in the NBA as well. I have high expectations for the Denver Nuggets as well. They were that close last year. They ended up losing in the semifinals in seven games to the Portland Trailblazers. And I think they would have been a much, much better fight to the Golden State Warriors in the conference finals last year. All right, coming into the number two seed, I got the Utah Jazz. Arguably the biggest winners in free agency up there with the Brooklyn Nets. Signing guys like Bogdanovich, getting that trade for Mike Conley, signing other great role players to fill out the bench like Ed Davis, Emmanuel Moutier, and Jeff Green. Although they did lose some key guys like Derek Favors and Jay Crowder, all these guys put together are going to fit and help Quinn Snyder with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert much better. Being able to space the floor, not having favors clog up the lane with Gobert there. And that's when they succeeded was when Jay Crowder was a stretch four. Now they've got that in a guy like Ingles or Bogdanovich, whoever they decide to play at the four. Mike Conley can take that pressure off Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is going to continue to grow and get better. Bogdanovich is a great player already, a guy that can get you 20 points per game as well with Mike Conley. They're going to be able to drive and dig. They're probably going to be using a lot of down ball screens and a lot of pistol formation to get Mike Conley and Bogdanovich into open situations off the dribble. This season is going to be very exciting for the Utah Jazz. They've got a lot of great pieces. Quinn Snyder is a great coach a coach of the year finalist two years ago, and their bench is going to be very solid as well. They've got guys returning to the team like Niang, Royce O'Neal, and Dante Exum. If this team can stay healthy, they're going to be competing up there with teams like the Lakers and the Los Angeles Clippers in the Western Conference this year. So I got the Utah Jazz coming in at number two. All right, my number one team in the West is kind of a no-brainer. It's going to be the Los Angeles Clippers. They got the biggest free agent in free agency in Kawhi Leonard. They traded for Paul George, and they've still got great pieces to go along with the team. They didn't have to give up too much right now with their giving up Gildas, Alexander, and Gallinari. They ended up giving away a bunch of picks, but that's all for the future. The Clippers are in win-now mode right now. Kawhi Leonard's an MVP caliber player. Paul George was third in MVP voting as well this season. And they've got a Hall of Fame coach in Doc Rivers. They've got a sixth man of the year in Lou Williams. One of the best defensive players in the NBA in Patrick Beverly. And Montre Montrez Harrell is going to be one of the better young and upcoming centers in the NBA slash power forward. And I expect them to be competing for an NBA Finals this year. All right, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please let me know what you guys thought about the content. Let me know what you guys thought about my playoff predictions. What are your guys' playoff predictions? And if you could please like, share, and subscribe down below, it'd mean a lot. Please go check out the description. My social media is going to be down there. And my man Lunchbox's social media is going to be down there. Please go help and support the channel. It'd really mean a lot. And that's it. Thank you guys. I'm out.